It's really cool. Ladies and gentlemen, when everything you do is a negotiation, everything, mm -hmm. the first negotiation you have is with yourself every single morning. When you open your eyes, whether it's because an alarm goes off or you're done sleeping, it's like, hmm, am I going to get out of bed or am I going to snuggle back under these sheets for a little while? And depending on where you are in the country, you may want to snuggle. I know we had just light snow out here this morning. I'm in Taos, New Mexico. And everything you do, if you're in a relationship or even if you're not, you're going to go out to dinner. Well, where are we going to go? And if you're smart, You'll go with where your lady wants to go. It's the best way to do that. So, <laughs> yes. Alex, feel free anytime to bring any questions or concerns because negotiation is such a fine thing. Most negotiation is I win, you get screwed. Would, would you agree in, in your experience that's the way the world unfortunately works? 100%. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. And then we have what I call level two negotiation, Alex. That's I win and you win. That's quite an up level from there. Mm -hmm. Then we have what I call level three, and that is I win, you win, and our cohort wins. Mm -hmm. That's even better. Alex, we have what's called level four. You win, our cohort wins, and humanity wins. If everyone played in that space, we wouldn't have people bombing one another. And I don't care which side you're on, you know, don't choose a side that's reality. And you wouldn't have kids going out and shooting up schools. That serves nobody. That's not a higher order of peace, nor is it of negotiation. So uh, as we get through this thing, I'm going to give you some gifts that may change the way you live your life, especially in negotiation. And I'm going to give you something now. This is an invitation to eliminate the word dollars from your vocabulary. Alex, will you even guess how often the word dollars is used? I, I, I don't know a number, it's a rhetorical question. But a lot, a lot. yeah, you buy in our house. Everyday, everyday routines. It yeah. is. Now, the word dollars has a huge emotional tag. It's mm. huge. If you're selling a house, let's say, and I don't know what part of the world or country you're in, and you're the salesperson and you say, hey, this house is on the market for $570,000. That's a big number. Eliminate the word dollars. This house is on the market for $570,000. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when the loan goes through, it's for the exact same amount. Make no mistake there. You get rid of the tag, the emotional stuff. So, and it doesn't make a difference if you're selling stuff in a store or to swap meet. Let's say you, you, you're in a, an art store. I live in Taos, New Mexico, again, very art town out here, no industry, it's primarily art. And when an artist, when I work with local artists, I say, don't sell this, this piece of art for $1,000. It's a 1000 Then, again, it has less of the emotion attachment, less of the, emo less of the emotional attachment. Mm -hmm. Now. When I teach this and I have slides, I have a PowerPoint of a sign from Walmart where there's one sign that has a dollar sign right next to it's another one that doesn't. Which do people buy more? Alex, there was research done at a restaurant. You've been to restaurants, haven't you, Alex? I mean, oh, at yes. least once? Oh, yes. What's Usually. the most prominent thing you see when you open up that menu? Dollar signs everywhere. Yep. Dollar You're signs. usually surprised when you don't see the price on something <laughs> on a menu. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Well, the research shows that a restaurant, when they remove the dollar, the, the dollar sign itself, Alex, we've already spoken to it. What do you think happens with sales? Yep. They increase. The increase is because there's no emotional attachment. And in some restaurants, it used to be only really high-end restaurants that didn't have dollar signs. Now more and more of them are discontinuing it. But wait, there's more. There is a time to use the, the word dollars. That is when you're offering a discount. Why? Because it amplifies the emotion. Yes. So let's use the house again. This house is on the market for 570000 I have a motivated buyer. She's willing to take $70,000 off. That makes it an even 500000 That's 
easy to remember because dollars are in the discount. Dollars are in the discount. That's where you make the offer. Hey, Alex, any questions come up for you? We got a lot more to cover, but I just want to yeah. see. If there's no, I, I love that. That's, and like you said, that's giving you leverage for your offer. So when you're really strategic about that um, and you do it in that right order, it's, it's going to really help you as, you as you make that offer. But yeah, just going off of you know, negotiation, I know you have um, an empowering negotiation program, and obviously that's brought a lot of attention. Can you just you know share some of those key principles or strategies for that program, just so some of our listeners could you know start applying them to their their daily negotiation skills? Absolutely, you've already got one, and that is the key. Eliminate the word dollars, except in the discount. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you can find a lot more of this information on the website richardk.com, r i c h a r d k a y e dot com. And I'm going to tell you, when you go to that website, you're going to see the hook. Everything needs a hook. You're all in sales. You're all entrepreneurs. You're buying. You're selling. That's the way the world works. Can there be higher levels? Yeah, that's the way the world works. And I'm going to give you a really big secret here. Get ready to write it down or type it or whatever it is. The opening on that website says, if you knew there were seven words that can increase what you get paid for something or decrease what you pay, you'd want to know those words. Wouldn't you want to know those, Alex? Those are yeah. super important. You, you want to know those right away. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to tell you right now, <laughs> okay? That's one of the things in negotiation is raise the specter. You, you must create want. For any deal that you do, one of the main things I do is we work with people in publicity. We get people guaranteed best-selling books. We get them on Amazon to be number one in multiple categories. We get stories about them in USA Today. We get stories about them in the Los Angeles Tribune. What does all that do? It creates want, which leads to the next level, which is a negotiation. If nobody wants what you're selling, you've got to figure out how to promote it a little differently. So I'm going to give you an example. When I used to live in San Diego, which I guess I was about 35 minutes from Tijuana, the culture in Tijuana is you negotiate. You never pay the sticker price. So the woman I was married to at the time, we went down there for the specific pur purpose. That they got a lot of wrought iron in addition to a lot of other stuff down there. The specific pur purpose was to get a wrought iron plant rack for the kitchen. We knew exactly what we wanted. We knew exactly where we wanted it to go. So I came across this vendor selling wrought iron plant racks. Now the underlying lesson here, and something else I invite you to write down, is remember your desired outcome. If you go into any conversation, any negotiation with, I gotta have it, you've already lost. There's no room. You're gonna get screwed. You can't go in with, I've got to have it. And if you do, fake it. Don't let anyone know. So again, the culture down there is negotiate. I asked the guy in my broken Spanish how much. He tells me $20. Well, the, the model may still be the same. I haven't been there in probably 25, 30 years. So I offered him 10. All right. 1975, 10 and a quarter. 1950, 10 and a half. We're just going back and forth and back and forth. And finally, we're something like 15 and a half and 15 and a quarter, 15 and a half, 15 and a quarter. My wife taps me in the shoulder, give him the freaking quarter, let's get out of here. You <laughs> got it? Most wives would, yeah. <laughs> yeah, did I care about the quarter? Did I care about 20 bucks? No, no it was principle. worth more. It's the principle of the thing. Mm -hmm. So I say, remember your desired outcome, and it'll serve you better than anything else. Which takes us, I'm sorry, say again? No, I said 100% agree. That, that takes you a lot farther <laughs> when you know that outcome. When you know that outcome. A buddy of mine back then was an emergency room doc at the hospital in San Diego, and I think it was the 280ZX that came out, the Datsun 280ZX, and he had to have the first one in town. I cannot imagine how much he overpaid. He was not willing to, and this is the intro to the next step, to walk away from a negotiation. Where's your limit? 
how much are you willing to sacrifice to have the it, whatever it is? So I, I, I remember we were good friends. He told me what he paid for it. And I said, are you crazy? Now, within a week, the town was flooded with them. The whole town, they were all over the place. But he had the first one. What did he get? He got bragging rights. He got to say, I got the first one. Cost him a, a couple of thousand more. What's it worth to you to have exactly what it is? Again, if you do that, and it's a must have, you've lost your leverage in negotiation. So know your boundaries, know your limits, know the words. Oh, I didn't tell you those seven words. We'll get to that in a little bit, Alex. We're gonna keep people thrilled here so you can find out what those seven words are. They work very powerfully. So what else do you need to know about negotiation? Know what the other person wants. Know what they're doing. Before you go into any negotiation, do some research and find out what the other person, the other team, the other company is about. You don't want to be offering things that don't matter. There are many segments in that negotiation program. You can take a look at it. Again, it's online, richardk.com, K-A-Y-E. There are segments there. And because this is video, I can give you one of them now. It doesn't work well on a podcast, so I'll, I'll talk through it and give it to you. And it's called flinching. Again, let's use that piece of art at a thousand, thousand bucks. And by the way, let's go back to the discount there. If you discount it, hey, I'm motivated to sell it. I'll take 200 bucks off it. That makes it 800. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? And I don't care what people think. I want to know what they feel. So, so when you are playing this game of negotiation, if you know what the other person wants, it's much easier to talk to those points instead of offering other bells and whistles and frills that they have no desire in. Never, ever, ever, word I like to use an expression, but I'm going to, well, let me turn it around positive. Always, always, always do research so you know who you're speaking with and what their takeaway is. If I'm talking about, I don't know, let's say commissioning a piece of art, and I need it for a gift for my wife within the next 10 days, and the artist is telling me, well, I can have it in two months, that's a time to turn around and walk away. Mm -hmm. If the artist knows I require it in 10 days, excuse me, let me get some water here, and says, hey, I can have it in 10 days, but it means I got to put everything else on hold and focus on this. It's going to cost an extra X number of dollars. So he knows or she knows what my pain point is. And if I really like this artist and I really want it <clears throat> in 10 days, am I willing to pay more? So now we're back and forth. If she says, hey, I can include this gorgeous frame and I'm not even at that place, I don't care. You know, maybe it's what they call museum wrap, where the sides are painted. Again, this is a very artsy town here. So you, you get to learn all this stuff. Know what the takeaway is for the other person so that you can match them. I'm using this as an example. My pain point was 10 days. She's trying to sell me on an extra, you know, on a prettier frame. I don't care. Give me the painting. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. So, Alex, th this that. is... Yeah. Okay, good. Just checking in with you. Yeah, uh, that's... I, I have a question kind of, you know, going off of... Um, you know, negotiation. We'll stay on this topic a little bit longer. How important is negotiating in person versus over the phone? Maybe it's a sales call. Maybe you're buying something. You know, how important is it to actually see the other person, see their body language, see how they're communicating, their nonverbals? Does that matter, or should you always try to negotiate in person if you can? I, I'm loving the question, and I love that you've already answered it. You're better off because of everything that Alex mentioned and more doing it in person. If you can't see the other person, you know, they may be, if you're on a telephone, they may be going, this guy's crazy, you know, because you, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Are they getting prompting? You want to be totally present with people. And now not every deal is possible like that. 
and you can't always be face to face. Clicks, beats, uh, place to place, clays, it trumps it hands down. Alex, you're brilliant in what you said. You can see their body language. And I talked about flinching, so I'm gonna come back to that, and this is perfect. If you are in a negotiation with someone, and they offer you, I use the same meta here, metaphor, this painting for $1,000, and you go, wow, $1,000? Much more impactful in person. I'm a retired chiropractor, so don't whip your body back too far and give yourself whiplash. <laughs> Can you do that on the phone? Sure. Wow, $1,000. To see that is much more impactful. And here's, so, so that's called flinching. It's very powerful, and here's why. The person making the offer has to explain it now. Once you flinch, you shut up. Let the other person justify it. Otherwise, you've lost. There's an old saying, the person who speaks first or makes the first offer loses. No, that's BS. That's an old model. It's a 1960s, 1970 model of negotiation. You want to be present with someone and see their facial expression, their body expression, their breathing rate, are their eyes you know, wide like, wow. Be present with people, Alex. In your business, you know that. You, you be people and you develop rapport with them. And that's why I go back, always do the research. Anytime I'm interviewing a client who is exploring publicity, and that's primarily what I do today, best-selling books, stages, show production, getting them out to the world, I'm going to do research and find out who they are. Mm -hmm. What is their goal? What's their bigger picture? Not in the moment. I mean, if I'm going, uh, go, going in Best Buy and I'm buying some electronic equipment or a camera, you don't have time to negotiate. But the salesperson, if they're smart, let's say I'm going in and buying, I don't know, speakers, you know, high quality speakers. The smart salesperson is going to ask, tell me about your system. And if I got it, I don't know if you're old enough to remember Radio Shack, Alex, but they, they were around when I was around. Mm -hmm. And if you got a, a lousy, you know, entry-level Radio Shack amplifier, why do you want good speakers? Let me show you what I've got that's even better. That's called an upsell. McDonald's basically started that. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've ever been in a McDonald's, you know the expression, do you want fries with that? Upsell generates for them at the time I did the research, it was $23 million additional sales. Well, how do you do that? If you're not selling hamburgers, you're not selling French fries and milkshakes, it doesn't make a difference what you're selling. If, if you've ever bought a car, Alex, you know the upsell. Oh, yeah. Would you, would you like to do that? Would you like tires with that? You know, would you like insurance? Uh, I think you could go with the sunroof, you know, leather seats. It's only a couple thousand more, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that, yep. that's an upsell. Mm -hmm. Makes no matter what business you are in. If you're selling consulting services, well, would you like our monthly program? Which, by the way, if you invest for a year, it's discounted by X number of percent. The upsell is very gentle. You go into a restaurant. Would you like a drink? Would you like an appetizer? Would you like dessert? That's upsell. No matter your business, this is an invitation. Very gently put it into play and watch your bottom line go exponentially up. So and you, you already own that, Alex. You know, you, you've been there, done that. Again, anyone who's bought a car, eaten in a restaurant, yep. it's, hey, would you like with that? Exactly. And uh, my, my wife and I were in a restaurant. We were up in Denver last weekend and on the menu is lava cake. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've never had it, go order one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But here's, here's what they used to. Now, she asked us if we would like it at, at the end of dinner. When these lava cakes came out, they would ask you when you're ordering your dinner, by the way, if you'd like the lava cake, you must order it now because it takes 20 minutes. That's BS. But <laughs> yep. they, well, you, you, you got it. You've been there, oh, done yeah. that, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. So, and you know, you know, but you still order it anyways. It's <laughs> it's how it usually yeah. goes. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. and at least forced because you know it, it, it's that good. Awesome. I, go ahead. You were going to say something, Alex? Yeah. No, I'm just you know, lot to unpack there. I think you know, my biggest takeaway is really know your audience. 
you know, before you go into a negotiation. That, that's really important because you want to know who you're speaking with. Just like in sales, too, like, you know, finding the decision maker is so important. Yes. But you mentioned, you mentioned too, a little about your book, and I, I want to dive into that a little bit. Um, obviously, you're, you're the author of The Secrets of Creating Customers for Life. Uh, yes. And I'm really, I'm really curious, you know, just some strategies you can share with our audience just about you know, cultivating long-lasting customer relationships and how important is that in business? Vitally. Creating customers for life. And I, I, I hate to remember the, the data, but you know everyone listening knows it costs a lot more to secure a new client than keep an existing one the marketing the branding you want top of mind awareness and I'm going to give you a story about that in a moment in the first opening pages of the book I talk about the distinction between a customer and a client mm -hmm. a customer you go to the 7-eleven you go to the supermarket you pay your money you got your product you're done there's no ongoing relationship. Now, by the way, they're, this find pretty much the same if you look it up online, you know, the definition, exchange money or something for services. I make a distinction as a client. You want an ongoing relationship with someone, excuse me. You want to build rapport. You want to build relationship. In the town where I live, it's small, and anytime you go out, you run into people you know. And I went to a friend's restaurant. I often go there when I have out-of-towners. It's great. And one day I was asked to go on uh, Yelp and write a review. Well, of course I would do that. Mm -hmm. What if I had been asked for my email address and I get a newsletter? every other week, every month, whatever it is, these are our specials, and when you bring someone in, we'll give you a free dessert. What does that do? If I'm going to go someplace, I'd be more inclined to go there. Mm -hmm. Years ago, there were two spa stores here, not the massage kind, the hot tub kind of places. One of the people whom I know always contributed to the community, contributed to charitable events, was on the radio, we don't have local television here, so that doesn't work. But he was out all the time. He was visible. At some point, the other spa company left town. And as he tells the story, his wife said, Honey, we're the only company in town. We don't need to advertise. We're it. There's nowhere else to go. <laughs> Alex, your laughter says it. What do you think happened with their business? No, they probably went under. <laughs> well, close. <laughs> the phone stopped ringing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they came back, and ladies and gentlemen, this is called top of mind awareness. When people think about whatever it is, you want them to choose you. Mm -hmm. You want them to say, I choose you. How do you get that? Top of mind awareness. You're not in whatever business you're in as much as you are in the referral business. You want your clients to come and say, hey, you got to work with these people. They're the best there is. Your role in this is to start with a suspect. Everyone is a suspect. Yeah, maybe they want to do business with me. Then you translate that into a prospect, someone who has a need for your services. When I was practicing chiropractic, someone who's looking for HVAC, heating, ventilating, and air conditioning, they're not interested in my services. So suspect to prospect to turn them into a client. And then your job is to turn them into raving fans. In our business with publicity and publishing, we under-promise, but we over-deliver. We even deliver services to people that have stopped paying us because what they asked us to do it's done, it's ended. Do you think these people go out and say, you gotta work with top talent agency? They are awesome. I haven't paid them in two years and they're still putting me on stages. They're still doing my book promotion. And if that speaks to any of you, it's toptagency.com. We can explore how we can serve you there. All right, Alex, we've held out long enough. Any other questions before I get to those seven magical words? No, I, I love that. I love that. You, like you said, you know, especially, you know, you want to be known, um, let's say, you know, restaurant industry, advertising, social media. You want people to think of you, whatever industry that is, you want to be that first person they think of. 
along you know they th- there might be hundreds of different competitors but you're that person that they think of and they associate with within that industry so i love it yeah i love it um, i want to speak to that because you say hundreds which triggers a memory when i graduated chiropractic college and drove from new york to san diego to start a practice 300 chiropractors in town alex ladies and gentlemen how do you start or grow any business in a crowded field and we are all in crowded fields well, I learned about publicity. I got myself on a morning television talk show, turned that to being invited back every month for about a year. Then I got an article in the San Diego Tribune. Then I got an article in the Los Angeles Times. And here's the flipping point, the tipping point. I get a call from a producer of the 630 News. She said, who are you? We're hearing your name. We're seeing you. You're all over the place. Now I got a 630 News segment. Shortly after that, I got a phone call from a producer at PBS. Very similar conversation. Who are you? We're seeing you. We're hearing about you. Mm -hmm. Now I've got a PBS segment about me. I was no longer one of just 300 people. I was probably at the time the most visible chiropractor in town. You can do that with your business. I can work with you on getting on radio and television so that you are visible. And I just spoke with a young lady before Alex and I started this. She's been in Inc. magazine. She's been in about a half a dozen magazines, and they're disjointed. So we work with you in leveraging them so people say, I choose you. All right, enough of that, Alec. You ready, you ready for this, those seven words? Yes, let's get, let's get right into it. Yep. Okay. Someone makes an offer doesn't make a difference if you're buying or selling. These were, I'm going to tell you this through a story. Many years ago, someone asked me to teach the work that I was doing through his program. <clears throat> You'll get an idea that it was decades ago, literally. We talked about the mechanics and the stories and where I'd be teaching three different cities. Mm-hmm. And Jay said to me, well, I can pay you $500 a city. Write this down, ladies and gentlemen. I said, Jay, that's actually the eighth word, <clears throat> Jay, You'll have to do better than that. I'm going to say it again. Alex, you got it right away. You'll have to do better than that. And then I stopped talking. Jay, without missing a beat, responded, well, the best I can pay you is $1,000 a city. Jay, uh, Jay, Alex, what did I just do? I just doubled what I got. Yeah. That, that quickly. Yeah, that, qu- that quickly. Yeah. Now, an antidote to this, because if someone's taken my program or been in one of my workshops or seminars, the antidote to that is exactly how much better do I have to do? Now, if Jay had said that to me, again, he was offering me five, and I said, you'll have to. He might have offered me six. I mean, I might have asked for six, maybe 650, maybe seven. Never would have doubled it. Mm -hmm. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me take you through that again so you can write it down. You'll have to do better than that. And you say it from a loving place. If you say it, you'll have to do better than that. You you, you lose. Be in the same space that you would like someone to connect with you. You'll have to do better than that. And wait for them to respond. And we go back to a comment I made earlier about something else. Now they've got to justify it. They've got to come up with why or why not again i have said this several times very artsy town here lady and i went out to an artist that i know and this young lady asked the artist she says beautiful work how long did it take you she said 32 years and four hours you're not paying for the four hours you're paying for her experience Mm -hmm. when you go to a professional you're not paying for that piece of art you're paying for the experience that went into it this makes sense, doesn't it, Alex? 100%, 100%. And I think people forget that all those years of, of work that that person did leading up to, you know, that offer, what they're selling, that, that program, that course. So there's a lot to, to, you know, unpack there, which, you know, what goes into the value propositions for a lot of products and services out there. Yes. And it makes no difference. Uh, an HVAC contractor. You're not paying for the 10, 15 minutes or an hour that that person spent with you. You're paying for the training, the wisdom, the experience, and the knowledge to know exactly what to do. And speaking on kind of a tangent, Alex, I I said I'd give viewers here. I'm not going to ask you for a number, Alex, but are there a lot of emails that you never open because the subject lines suck? Yeah. 
Attention yeah. is everything. You got to get attention. you got to get their yeah. attention. Some 50 million tri- 57 trillion emails never get opened. Mm-hmm. It's right swipe, left swipe, click, delete. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you a thousand proven email subject lines. Now, would you write an email is up to you. Once it's open, let's talk about marketing. If any of you buy those you know, uh, trash rags at the checkout stand, what is the subject line? You know, a seven-headed monster landed in our parking lot. You know, the purpose of headlines is to get attention. Mm-hmm. That's all it's about. The purpose of the first is to get you to read the second, and it goes on. If you read novels, and I admit at night, I don't want to work, I read novels. Oh good, I'll, put it, I'll, I'll close the book at the end of this chapter. Well, she thought she was done with this project, she had no idea what awaited her. Oh shit, now i got to read the next chapter. We're, we're all like that. So I'm going to give you a thousand proven subject lines. It's richardk.com forward slash 1000, the numbers, 1000. richardk.com forward slash one, the number 1000. And if you have a desire for publicity, a couple of years ago, there were 30 to 40 new books released every single month. Alex, I won't even ask you to make a guess. I'll tell you, <laughs> there are 7,500 books released every single day now. How do you stand out from the crowd? If you want to know more about publicity, you want to talk, know more about negotiation, talk about publicity.com. It's all one word, no periods. One word, talk about publicity.com. Take it right to my calendar. Reach out. Let me know how I can serve you. Since I retired from chiropractic about 23 years ago and moved out here to Taos, I've been serving entrepreneurs ever since. Mm-hmm. So if you got something you want to know, how I can help you grow your business, get publicity, help you with negotiation, fine-tuning it, taking it to the next level, mm-hmm. reach out and see how I may serve you. 100%. Great opportunity right there for everybody to reach out. <laughs> yeah, so let's let's wrap it up. You know, I, I want to you know just dive in a little bit, just to like you know some advice that you would give to inspiring entrepreneurs that are looking to make a significant impact in their industry. Mm-hmm. They're looking to create a legacy. I know that that word is thrown around a lot today in the entrepreneur space. Um, so I'm really just you know curious to know you know what kind of legacy that you're leaving behind and how important is it you know to to make an impact in in your industry so vitally important ladies and gentlemen if you show up to take to be a user taker that's a hell of a legacy you don't need that if you show up to serve in some some parlance is you go first if you want to set up an alliance partnership or a joint venture my classic question, what I am most known for, because it comes back to me, is my question is, how may I serve you? What do you need next? We'll figure out my part. Yeah, there'll be a part. Be in generosity. Be in collaboration and co- cooperation instead of, hey, I'm going to take, I'm going to take, I'm going to take. That's not a legacy you want to live. And live your legacy and live it without planning it. Again, I mean... I just got off a phone call with a major company. Alex, where do you live? I'm in Tampa, Florida, currently. Okay, it's kind of far. We're doing a major gala in San Diego on December 3rd. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a red carpet event. If you want to know more, talk about publicity.com if you're in the Southwest. Mm -hmm. Uh, The the mayor can't make it, and I say that seriously. A woman this morning said, I I, I want to bring some really big players, a red carpet event. Mm-hmm. And we're going to do a webinar to talk about it. And this is not about me. It's just metaphor. And I said, I can't do that particular day because I'm flying. This is the day I'm flying out to San Diego. Mm-hmm. She said, no, no, I want you here because you're the person who's putting it together. Don't have an ego about things. Let other people take credit. Serve them. That's what you want to be known for. Live your legacy now. When I interview clients, either business building or books or promotion, publicity, and Alex, when I ask people, what's your long game? What do you want to do? And I kid you not, I've had this. Oh, I just want to go to Tahiti and drink margaritas on the beach. That's not a client I'm interested in. 
We want to work with people who are about serving humanity, up-leveling the vibration of this planet. Show up and serve. Let that be your legacy. Anything built around that is secondary. Let service be your humanity. It'll serve you and everyone with whom you come in contact. I love that. I love that. When you serve others and other people before yourself and before your business, then you know that's where the real growth and and, and real magic starts to happen. So yeah, uh, yeah. And I think I, I just want to add a caveat: not at self sacrifice, but for everybody to win, right? Yeah, you can't lose yourself in between that or your family or your friends in between that as well. So 100% agree. Um, is there anything else you, you want to close out as we, we kind of wrap up? We, you know, we touched on a lot of great things. I know I'm going to go back and listen to this one. This was uh, definitely one of my favorites. A lot of great notes. Is there anything else you want to, to, to touch on before we wrap up? Yeah, step out of judgment. When we're judging somebody else... We have no idea what's going on in their lives. So the, the Talmud tells us we don't see the world as it is. We see it as we are. So when you see someone behaving in a really strange way, step back. Let them be. And if you can serve them, yeah. Boy, have we got about 90 seconds for me to share a story? Yeah, 100%. Go for it. Uh, it conjures up. My, my wife came back from the supermarket one day, mm -hmm. and she says on the way in, she saw this guy incoherent, you know, probably drugs or alcohol. We don't know which one. Mm -hmm. And her, her books, Angela's books, are about kids growing up and owning who they are so they don't go out and shoot up schools, you know, bowling alleys and kill kids. Mm -hmm. And boy, it's another one. And ladies and gentlemen, if that speaks to you, Angela Lee, A N G E L A L E G H dot com. And she writes fairy tales to empower kids. So she knelt down by this kid and he told her a story that he watched his father slit his mother's throat. And I mean, yeah, I cannot imagine what it's like. And the biggest thing she said to him, it's not your fault. So he chose to shelter from his soul, from his self, and you know, turn to drugs and alcohol. And he started crying. You know, you're not responsible for that. Claim who you are. A couple of weeks later, she came back from another store, and she was just beaming. She said she saw this guy out there, wasn't on drugs. He was playing guitar, still trying to raise a couple of bucks for food. And God bless her. She got him food to both places. And he says, lady, you saved my life. I didn't tell you. I was suicidal. Wow. He says, you gave me permission. I, never, I always thought it was my fault. I That's the power of connecting with people. Look in their eyes. See their soul. Forget the bodysuit. Mm -hmm. See their souls. And if you can serve them, I mean, how simple an act. It's not your fault. So, I love uh, that. Yeah, no, that's that's amazing. And you never you never know what's going through. You know, you I have so many friends for years and business partners, and it's like you you really have to take time to really build a relationship and, and allow a safe space for them to to feel comfortable, so they can really you know express what's going on in their life. And and you have to do it in a in a in a way where you're not you know. Uh, delittling them and you're not you know downgrading their value so mm -hmm. yeah you, you you never know you never know what what somebody else is going through so i love that yeah thank you for helping me remember that story so, yeah alex pleasure serving you and ladies and gentlemen out there let me know how i may serve you i yeah i we appreciate your your time and you know there's a lot a lot of great stuff that came out of this so uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it, it launching soon so but yeah other than that this is uh, another edition of scaling secrets podcast i'm your host alex thank you so much dr richard k for your time thank you thank you